Welcome to the Talk Over Podcast, a conversational platform for the DJs by the DJs, brought to you by Double and Stylus. Swag. Tune in every week to hear us talk about all the things we see, hear, and experience as DJs. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel at youtube.com forward slash talkover or follow the Talkover podcast page on Spotify. I'm doing the, I'm doing the, <laughs> what? I'll do a DJ double impression. Talk over podcast, DJ status, DJ double, inside the building. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag, talk, hashtag over talk, podcast. talk over podcast. We're in the building. Inside the rider. What's, What's going on, Dubs? I'm all right. Good bro. morning, mate. I'm all right, mate. I've I've had I've had a good run of shows recently, so. A good what? Run of shows. A good run of shows. Yeah, last weekend, the bank holiday weekend was good to me. Had oh snap, I, mul- oh, pff, bro. Multiple shows, but I'm not gonna lie, bro. So I have obviously my Monday night and Tuesday night residency as well. So I ended up doing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, two shows on Sunday because we had the daytime garden party and then the nighttime one. Money bags. Then, Mr. Money bags. No, I work for free. Uh, then Monday <laughs> and then... He <laughs> works for exposure. He works yeah, for exposure. I'm doing it for Instagram followers. But then I did Monday and Tuesday <laughs> as well. So Wednesday was my first night off. I'm not going to lie, bruv. Like, I'm tired it is it has worn me down and i You're think it today bro i think she's, she's getting old g you know what it is it might be that but a few years ago it wouldn't have been an issue i swear i remember i did a show i did a run of shows once i had i think i had like 16 shows in a row 16 nights in a row and i sailed through it brother and it was sick i was tired by the end of it but yeah man it's, when you're younger, you're undefeatable, brother. That's what it is. Like you, I even even I was saying this the other day. I used to be able to drink so well when I was young. I could yeah. go out, DJ, turn up, wake up the next day. I'm nice. Yeah, I'm yeah, nice. Yeah. No hang, no hangover. I'm not feeling it now. I get a hangover from DJing. <laughs> oh, I'll be real, bruv. I'm all, I'm I've always been a pussy when it comes to drinking. Like I've always Look been a little bitch. pussy. Off. <laughs> always been a bitch when it comes to drinking. I can't yeah, handle. Yeah, I've drank with you before, bro. Yeah. And the hangovers are very, that. very real. But no, you know what? I think this tiredness thing, I don't think it's necessarily my age because um, I'm not old. Just like to put that out there. Um, <laughs> I think, you know what it is? I think being able to do the shows in the past was when I could come in from DJing and literally sleep until like three, four, five o'clock in the evening if I wanted to. Do you know what I mean? You can come yeah, in at yeah, six yeah. or like, seven like, in the like morning. <laughs> Basically like you do now. But you can... <laughs> I can get in at like four, five, six in the morning, sometimes even seven o'clock. And even back then, you know, I was even leaving the club, going to the studio. So I wasn't actually even coming home until like 11 o'clock in the morning, maybe 12 o'clock, then going to sleep. But sleeping for as long as I wanted to do because I had nothing else to do. That was literally when just club DJing was the only thing I was doing. Whereas now it's different. Obviously, you've got, the podcasts that we do, you've got the interviews that I do, you've got various bits and bobs in and out of London, got other things, do you know what I mean? Constantly, just constantly on the workflow in the daytime as well. And plus, for me... Work don't stop, man. It, well, the work doesn't stop, but for me as well, it's about family time too. Do you know what I mean? So I've got my true. little boy, I've got true, Leanne true, to spend true. time with and stuff. So back then, none of these factors were in place. It was just the clubs. And now it's literally like... 24 hours a day there is something to do now, bank holidays most times mess you up anyway but if I just had I had the same as you bro a mad one over the weekend yeah and then I was meant to I played in Newcastle Saturday night and I was meant to come home <coughs> on the Sunday yeah didn't happen man <laughs> ended up getting super waved I played this day party on Sunday shout out to Spy Bar that place was sick oh Yo, yeah bro this day year. the day party was lit man yeah it was lit I get there, two o'clock, half two in the afternoon, manager's feeding me, st- bro, right, shots, right, of straight vodka, bruv. Oh. <laughs> At two right, o'clock in the shot. afternoon? Uh, bro, I, was near, I, had to, I had to firm a couple of them shots. <laughs> bro, I'm not even lying, I couldn't, I don't think I'd cope. <laughs> I gotta say though, that day party, brother, like, do you know when does any song any song, yeah. any selection, like they're just having it, like it's just the it's just the vibe. Like I've been, I've been there before to rave. I partied there last year, and then this year I got to DJ there. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was it was lit, man. Like Q's there in his in his mink fur jacket. <laughs> 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 looking like looking like some fucking pimp, bro. <laughs> man, like Q, bro. Big ass Q. All the, and then all, all the DJs come all the DJs come through, like all the promoters go through there and rub shoulders and it's kinda of, yeah, it's just it was just lit, man. That was on that was one of the better gigs. I just think day day parties just have a spe- a, like a special vibe about them in it. Like you you done your garden party and you I swear you said last year that was your favourite gig and yeah. then this year was even better. Yeah, like yeah, so, that's like, it basically that, yeah. Last year the garden party in Southampton was my favourite set of the whole year. And this year obviously we're only just into May, in it. But this year the yeah, set yeah. was even better than last year. The crowd, bruv. You know, it's them ones where literally like, <laughs> on, and obviously I do a lot of hosting as well. So there's times where I can, and I've explained this before, where I can just literally turn the music off and just chat for a bit before I play the next song. I like, yeah, 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 bro. Yeah. It, it was just a complete vibe, man. Like it was, it's just different when I it's don't a know, daytime. I, bro, party, I don't know it's what it is. A complete it's, different atmosphere. Exactly that, and I don't. And why is that? Like, why, why do people come out in the daytime with a completely different mentality? Like these same people would come out on a Saturday night and. And and be stush. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And or, you know what? Or the, calm, the same, but then the on the same Saturday, on a Sunday afternoon, it's lit. Like but, yeah, everyone's also, smiling. They're not pushing the music. Like they're leaving the DJs alone. Like no one even come asking for records or nothing, bro. No, like, I don't, I don't think anyone, anyone asked for a request. And it's funny because the exact same set. Like uh, it was a proper. Like, I proper shelled it on Sunday at the garden party, bro. Like, sick, sick, <laughs> honestly. was feeling himself No, 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 I, I'm, I'm proud to own Go this on, one, brother. I say it with my chest, man. Like, literally, like, I shelled it on Sunday. But if I took the exact same set, even the way I hosted it, and put that into a club set at night time, I don't know would if it, it would have the exact same effect. It'd still be good, yeah, but yeah, I just yeah. don't know if it would have like when people reacted the way that they do and the times that I was reloading songs I don't know if it would be the same in the club it's weird man. It's, it's like it just puts up it's like there's just an aura in the air like it just like changes people's mentalities man everyone just relaxes a little bit more yeah like, I don't know what it is I don't know what it is I don't know what it is but it might Sunday literally just be because anyway. the sun's still up because our one is obviously I know uh, Spy Bar it's indoors but our one is an outdoor party it's a garden party yeah, at so a that, venue. yeah so that's even so, better man yeah, that's even better, bro. It's just just daytime vibes, and it's obviously like it goes on till ten o'clock. So by the time we're finished, it's starting or it is dark. It's been dark for like an hour or whatever. But the whole build up to it and the beginning part of my set, it's all still daylight. So it might be just to do with that. Literally, people are just having fun in the day. Yeah, possibly. possibly. But um, anyway, I wanted to ask you about. Gang anyway. I wanted they to look. ask you about your body clock because I know you've had you've had some. Like a busy time Fam, recently, and your your sleeping I've, I've just had a rough left, right, and centre. <laughs> Trust me, I I've just had the sickest running with the body clock stuff, man. Like literally, in the space of, in fact, I've just had to reflip it again this week for a dental appointment. Right, getting me up at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So basically, it was before I went away with the wifey. I'd just done like like five gigs back to back, so I'm going to bed at like. 6 a.m. Yeah, I mean, getting out, the, getting out the club at like four. By the time I get home, five, and then I have this thing where I can't, I can't just go to, I can't just go to bed after a gig, man. Like I, I like, I'll sit in the car for 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calm down. Then I'll go into the crib and I'll sit down and I'll chill in there. I know DJs have this thing where they sit in the car on the phone for ages. Yeah, like, I <laughs> we spoke I've, about that I've with been, Martin, didn't we? <laughs> I've been doing that shit for time, bro. But then yeah. I'll go in the house and I'll do it again. I can't just like... So it's like 6 a.m. before I get in bed. Shit, so I'm you're spending literally sleep. like 45 minutes just on the phone once you get home. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Mad. Yeah, sometimes. Which is not healthy, really. But I know I, can't, I don't sleep well in it. So like I have to tire myself out yeah literally before i can sleep if i try and get in bed before i'm tired and force myself to sleep impossible brother like it just will not happen yeah, like yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm an insom i'm an insomniac so anyway by six by the time six o'clock comes i'm in bed get up try and get up at a normal time man how long then, do you, how long do you sleep for usually do you like when you're when you're setting what time you get up the next day let's say you let's say it's it's Wednesday night, you've just got into bed at six o'clock in the morning now, Thursday morning. How do you um, judge when you're going to get out of bed? Well, do you know what? I don't... 
Right. So you, I, don't, so you, don't set, you don't set an alarm or anything? So you just literally... No, like, no, no. This is this is what wifey always says to me, man. She's like, you need to set an alarm. You need to get in a routine. But I don't sleep very well anyway. Yeah. Basically, I'll have like a week of shit night sleep. And right. then I'll have one night of good sleep because right. I'm exhausted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's weird, man. Like, if I go to bed at like six, I'll, sl- I'll get like four hours of clean sleep. And then after that, it's just like broken sleep. Right, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. just keep waking up. I'll just keep waking up, going back to sleep, waking up. Like, mad for frust- mad frustrating. It's horrible. <laughs> but yeah, I've, like, four, four minimum. And then, like, obviously yesterday, we were meant to record this yesterday. And that was the day of, like, the day that I slept in. I woke up at, like, two. <laughs> yeah. So I got, I, got, like, I got, like, seven, eight hours. When I get a seven, eight hour sleep, I feel on top of the world, mate. Yeah. I swear to God, it doesn't happen. So anyway, four or five nights back to back, going to bed six a.m. Then on the on the Sunday, I'm going away with wifey. She goes, she gets up and goes to work at half five in the morning. Yeah, so you're literally on so opposite uh, body clocks, isn't it? Yeah. So I'll come in from the club. She's getting up, and we'll have a brew together at the table before she goes to work and before I get in bed. Right. Yeah. So it's like. When when we go away together, I have to adapt to her body clock kind of thing. Yeah. So then I'll try and go to bed at like 11, 12, midnight, impossible, and then getting up at like 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. So then after doing that for a week, it takes me a week to adapt. So I'm feeling like shit all week while we're away. <laughs> Not saying nothing to wife him, just firming it. By the time it gets to the end of the week... I've got my body clock used to going to bed early. <laughs> yeah, back into daytime. Then, mode. I, then, then, then I fly back the next the, the next night. I'm DJing again, and yeah. I'm back in at five six a.m. Then on the Monday, after doing four or five days again back to back, I've got to be up at eight a.m. to to have a dental appointment after a gig, getting in at five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, honestly, mate, I've been I I've been feeling like Walking Dead. Yeah, it's it's like, mad, like, bro. It is. It's like a surreal outer body experience that uh, you can't explain. Yeah. Like, and you just feel like, I can't explain it, man. I can't explain the feeling. Like it, You just feel like you're not there. Yeah, no, I know exactly what like, you mean. Like, like I, you're not with it at I all. Have, like, I have times like that. It most happens to me, yeah, when I get those feelings, when I've been driving back. If I have to drive back a long way from a gig, I'll wake up the next day and f- remember parts of the drive, but not remember the whole drive, but I'll remember like, oh, right, right. I think so I, this think guy's I nearly... Fucking, this, this guy said this, he remembers parts of the drive. Yeah, guy's but, falling asleep at intervals. But honestly, in there's, sometimes, it's, oh my sometimes God. there's part of the drive, like whole sections of a motorway that I don't even remember when I wake up the next day, I'm like, shit. How did I get home? Like, not how did I get home, but I'm like, Right, there's certain landmarks or do you know what I mean? Like service stations or certain parts of the drive. Like just for example, I won't remember, there's a bridge that I have to go under really close to my house and I'll just be like, I don't remember going past the bridge. <laughs> like, Yo, that sounds mad dangerous. But there's no, <laughs> there's no way I could have got to my house without going under the bridge. I have to go under the bridge, otherwise I'm not home. I like the guys just gone into autopilot mode. Literally, bruv. I think I just literally. glaze over and just follow the white lines on the road, and then I'm home. It's fucking weird, man. But I know exactly what you mean about that, like that weird hazy feeling you get in your brain. I do get it sometimes. Um, I actually I don't like it, man. Like it fully mashes up your flow. Like you can't like for for a couple of days. It takes you a couple of days to start feeling normal again. Like I hate flipping my body clock around. Oh, like it's, wifey it's does it when she does nights and because she's not used to it like we're semi used to it like we work like we've been doing this long enough yeah so like she's just she started doing like nights so every every other month they'll flip her shift to a night shift for a week yeah yeah, uh, yeah. But bro yo the first time she done that bro oh my she was out of the game like it made her ill she yeah. was sick she, she had to go off sick for a week like fully fully mashed her up man so i was like fucking hell like we've yeah. been dealing with this for time. Like our bodies are finished, mate. Well, I think the thing is, like, yeah, that's like see where we've been DJing. Like we've both been doing doing clubs now as like the permanent job for uh, well over ten years now. And so, like yep, yep, for 10, us, 10, 12 years for, for me, us man. being active at two a.m., being creative at like from one till three, that's a normality for us. And I think yep, that's yep, why. Yep. What's the time now? So it's right now. It's. 10 to 2 right now it's 10 to 2 G can you believe in, this in the <laughs> afternoon but I feel like Let's that's why right now at this time of day I'm probably at my slowest 
you know what I mean? Like if I was, if I was have to create a mix now or do something now, it would yeah, it would I probably take me twice as much time to do it than it would if I was to sit down 12 hours from now and actually do it. Um, okay. But you know what? Everything changed for me. See, I used to literally just do clubs and then sleep until I wanted to wake up. And I never used to set an alarm. So I was getting like eight hours, sometimes even nine hours sleep if my body just wanted to sleep for that long. Get up whenever, just do whatever. When um When my son was born, when Roman was born, that was when everything changed because obviously now we've got a baby in the house. I was coming in from the club and then having to look after a newborn baby because Leanne had been up with him all night. So then I'm having to deal with him for a couple hours. So I wasn't getting into bed till like nine o'clock in the morning sometimes. Like, wow. I know, yeah, bro. Honestly, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. And that was that was for like the first year of his life. He was, he was kind of... <coughs> up and down throughout it's, the night it's like, like you want to try and live a semi-normal life in it as well like, especially with you with the little one like, oh yeah, yeah that's game. but well, you, you still have to like your sleep is minimal man this guy i'll be speaking to this guy after the rave it's five o'clock oh, i've got, got to be up in two and a half hours <laughs> <laughs> no but you know what i actually Don't i actually have it, tried to I've, I've tried to scale back a little bit do you remember like i think last week i was saying about how i've cut a lot of dead wood off of the things that i do so i'm not as active you know we were talking about like spinning too many plates basically and dj's yeah, doing yeah, too yeah, much yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. and so yeah, yeah, yeah. in in the same process of cutting all that stuff off that i didn't need to do things that weren't connecting it actually has allowed me to get a little bit more time sleeping because i've realized bruv like it's not healthy for me to be doing these two hour drives when i've only had three hours sleep do you know what i mean like it's no, actually it's pretty dangerous what i did manage to do I managed to master what I called a 10 minute sleep. And it literally is exactly as it sounds. Go to sleep for 10 minutes. And then you can- The you, guy said it's exactly how it yeah, sounds. It's a 10 minute it's sleep. A 10 minute sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> basically, once you get used to it, bruv, you can go to sleep for 10 minutes and that'll set you for the night. You're good now. So like- No, that's, on, that's not possible for me, bro. No, no, no. I but never. You, you can, I mean- 10 minute sleep. I'm just Get saying out. for me it works, but it didn't work straight away. It took a long time to get into it. So let me talk you what let me talk you through why I had to start doing it. So on Mondays, excuse me. On Mondays I'd get up in the morning at seven o'clock in the morning. So I wasn't working Sunday night. I'd get up at seven o'clock in the morning with Roman, get him ready for school, take him to school, drop him off, then go to the gym, then come back for about ten o'clock onwards that's when my working day would start. So I'd be getting on with like mixes or radio show prep or interview prep or whatever I had to do during the daytime, <clears throat> excuse me, like catching up with music, et cetera, et cetera. Then three o'clock comes, have to go and get Roman from school, pick him up and then spend the afternoon with him doing the family stuff till about five, six o'clock when we all have dinner together. Then he goes to bed. So from half seven, he's gone to bed. That's, basically like the time when I've not got to work because in the night time at 11 o'clock I have to leave to go to the club so I've now got a couple yeah, hours yeah, yeah. obviously I want to spend a little bit of time with Leanne because I've been working all weekend and this and that etc so we spend a little bit together it get back get to a probably about nine half nine and then what I would do I would go to sleep for 10 minutes like 10 to 15 minutes but like mostly wow. 10 minutes and then sleep for 10 minutes get up go get in the shower get changed then boom it probably <laughs> that's, but that's crazy bro yeah i tell you sleep you know yeah that, that made me feel worse i think that made me feel worse well i after a like, while it did for a bit but after a while i actually started to feel all right and what it would do is i'd be knackered by the time i go to sleep go to sleep for 10 minutes and then literally i set an alarm so i wake up 10 minutes later and then I feel refreshed. I feel like I've had a full night's sleep and then I'm, boom, jump in the car, get shirt off down to the club. Oh, oh shit, I'm yawning now. Sound, sound, like, sound like you need a fucking 10 minutes. I need a 10 minutes sleep, mate. yeah. <laughs> right, I tell you what, you chat for 10 minutes, bro. I'm just going to close my eyes and I'll, I'll be back in with my contribution in 10 minutes time. Um, but I tell you when I figured out that 10 <clears throat> minutes was a good time, it was when I was driving back from the clubs and I'd have to go to sleep. So what I'd do is I'd pull over on the motorway and you know the little laybys on the motorway where the where the police park their cars to be off the motorway but still 
So that they're double parking up like some like some CID, like some <laughs> undercover police. But you know they've got like ramps. You know they've got ramps next to the motorway, so they're not parked yeah, on the yeah, high yeah, shoulder. Yeah, they're like mean. elevated yeah, yeah, out the way. Yeah, yeah. I would reverse reverse into one of them, bruv. Park my car up and go to sleep for like ten minutes, and that was Fair. that was when I realised that I could actually properly do ten minute sleeps. It was doing those drives. No, nah, that's, that's a dope idea, bro, to be fair. Like, since I started using the gym, like, that has definitely made me a little bit more tired throughout the day. Yeah. Like, now, before, I'll just be, like, jit- I'll just be super active and jittery all the time. Like, like I was on flipping crack, mate. Like, the gym has <laughs> definitely, the gym has definitely, like, leveled, leveled me out when it comes to, like, I actually get, I do get a bit tired now. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to have little naps, but that, I'll go and lie in bed, and I'll just lay there for an hour, and I'm not sleeping, then I'll get up. <laughs> yeah but you know literally, what even even actually i'll just lie there but like, lying I down know, but and I just resting sleep. your brain helps a bit as well i did quite a bit of reading yeah. about it because i wanted to know if i was messing myself up with these little 10 minute sleeps or anything like that um and I, I even just lying down and relaxing even if you can't get to sleep just lying down and relaxing your brain actually does help a little bit not as much as if you were getting the sleep of course but it does help it does help a bit yeah that's what i think that's the stage that i'm at it's just a rest in the brain thing like i'll just go and lie down but yeah actually turning off i have this thing where if it's daylight outside I, my body just won't allow it man like i've what? seen people <coughs> tweeting on, i've seen people tweeting about this stuff saying they have like free i thought i was weird because i could only get three four hours sleep yeah but i feel like there's bare people out there that are doing that <coughs> i think like, there's quite a lot that's not health it's not healthy man like what's no. the average what did he say the average is like six to eight yeah, I think so. I mean, I if I like six to eight hours is a good average, isn't it? Like I can't. I, that happens. It, it's very rare, bro. If I go very to rare. sleep nowadays, I'll generally like, especially because last week, for example, I I had a few a bunch of shows together, and I wasn't sleeping really very much in between them. And by the last show, I felt so ill, brother. Like, proper, my nose was streaming. I just felt so ill. So I just went to bed and didn't set an alarm. I just slept until I woke up and I felt good again. But if I do that, so if I go to sleep and don't set an alarm, I'll sleep for seven hours. And then literally almost seven hours on the dot, my body will just wake me up. Like, cool, we're good to go. So like, unless I'm ill, I can't remember the last time I slept longer than seven hours, to be honest. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's unheard of. Not like, not like proper sober, normal sleep. (laughs) I think. Unless I've been sick, like if I've been ill, yeah, yeah, that's well, that's what I mean. If I'm if I'm ill, that's it, like, well, it's probably, I'm probably ill for that reason. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, because I'm not is, sleeping man. and just grinding twenty four seven, like literally. Yeah. I, I, I remember, bro. Like this is like if I go back like five six years ago, I would never want to sleep because I was like so hungry to like do this music thing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I felt like it, I felt like if I like turned off in the day, like I was like cheating myself. Yeah, definitely. like I. I was, like, I was obsessed with the grind. Don't get me wrong, I'm still obsessed with the grind now, but I've just found more of a balance with it. But back back then, like, I just felt like I was cheating the game, man. Like, you can't be sleeping when everyone else is, like, when everyone else is moving. Like, you got to keep it moving at all times. Yeah. And, like, that's the point where I was at, man. Like, I had to really fucking pull that back a little bit yeah. and, get, and get more of a balance. Well, Especially like, now, I'm trying to like do creative stuff on the, as well as my DJing, which is where my, a lot of my daytime focus is. So I try and I'm trying to like get up and be productive as well as working late at night. Yeah, do you know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's it's and that a, comes it, back again to tough one, mate. what I was saying about like when I'm active in London, going to do the interviews and stuff, and all the interview prep and this and that. And yeah. obviously, the artists they're out doing. They want to come and do an interview. They don't want to do it at. 2 a.m. They want to do it in the daytime, so like yeah. I've got to be up That's active real. in the daytime. But yeah, man, like I mean, I, f- I feel exactly the same way as you. Like earlier in my career, it was a time where I was like, uh, do you remember when we went? When we actually went to New York? Do you remember when we went to New York and yeah, filmed yeah, yeah. the documentary, the Underground Kings documentary? It was around up to about that time when I was literally, I would <coughs> refuse to sleep for longer than six hours. I'd be up, literally, no matter what time we went to bed. This guy, six, this guy's been gym late. in the hotel and everything before I've even got up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. Like, honestly. It's like, yo, where's double? Boom. Not even in the up, room. Up, <laughs> hit the gym, get some breakfast and get straight to work. Like, but I yeah, realise now. Yeah, we were, 
Bro, we was really, we was on the grind then. Yeah, proper. That was the proper grind. Yeah, I miss that, you know. I want to go back. We need to go back and do a part two, G. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, been, I've been saying it, man. we got to hit New York again this summer, bro. Mad, 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 mad. Yeah, we mad. do need to film another one. But, um, but yeah, I mean, doing that, I so I was solidly probably for about 18 months. And I think I spoke about this in the podcast we did about anxiety and depression. For about 18 months, I was solidly just working flat out didn't sleep for longer than six hours any night, no matter if I'd been on a turn up, no matter if I was ill, refused to sleep for longer than six hours a night. And then got loads of stuff done. But in the end, I ended up actually getting ill. And that's when yeah. all my anxiety and stuff kicked off. It was mad. So having having yeah. a healthy amount of sleep, I think is one of the most important things, man. Especially like, especially in our line of work where the body clock is just so messed up. And you know, bruv, you know, there's some DJs out there that, they actually work a nine to five Monday to Friday. It's quite, Whoa. I think it's quite common. They work, they have an office job Monday yep. to Friday and then Friday night, Saturday night, they're out playing in the clubs. Like, yeah, that, yeah, ha, their weird. body yeah, clocks, I guess, their I guess body if they're just doing Friday, Saturday super though. Fucked. If they're only doing the two nights though, it's not that bad. Like you stay up late on weekends anyway, do you know what I mean? So like, mm. if you just push yourself through with doing a gig on a Friday and a Saturday night, but then you can sleep normal on a Sunday when you're knackered, like yeah. you're not fully flipping the body clock, like doing the t like two nights, two nights on, five off. So it's like, if they were DJing Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, some Sunday nights, and doing the nights five, you, you ain't, you're not surviving for long doing it like that. No, I no. reckon I could hold a nine to five and do a Friday and a Saturday night gig on its own, but. Doing what I'm doing now, four or five nights, nah. I had an office job. Chance. I had an office job for just over a year. <laughs> is that is that what that picture was? On your story <laughs> today, that suit. No, no, no. <laughs> that, that was in two, bro. That was in 2011. That was what, that's what Double used to rock to his office job, you know. No, no, no. <laughs> not even. Not even. I had hair when I had the office job. Um. So anyway, oh, up I until up until 2007. Either. But get this, I would work from 9 a.m till 5 p.m. in the office. I was running a recording studio at the same time as well. So after the office, I'd literally drive home, shower and change, go straight to the studio because we had things going on there. So I was running that. And then after the studio, I was DJing four times a week. So I was out in the clubs. But at this point, <coughs> I'm pretty sure clubs were only open until 2 a.m. For real? Yeah. Wow. It wasn't a 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. license. It was only 2 a.m. So I was out DJing until 2 a.m. and then had to go home and sleep for a couple hours before getting up to go and do the office job again. And I quit that office job in 2007. Double was an office right. grafter, you know. Yeah, man. I worked I for an insurance that. company. I and respect that, man. Well, that's... Yo, that's yo, let's, let's, talk, let's, let's talk about some of our early jobs before we, before we became DJs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Because, man... Go Bro, in fact, yo, I'm gonna let, let me flip this camera over. I need to flip the camera over. <laughs> All right, so before before the office job, what was I doing before the office job? You know what? To be honest, bro, I didn't really have any career type jobs because straight out of college, I wanted to DJ. So as soon as I was 17, I was like, yeah, I want to do this DJing thing. Oh, bro, same, same. Like, but I wasn't making no the, money off it. The only the only <laughs> other thing the only other thing I was gonna do is free because free college i was going to be i basically went to college and did uh, a diploma that would have got me into the marines like into the military okay. basically but yeah, on a, they, on yeah, a you, officer yeah, you level. look like the marine cat you look like a marine cat back then funnily enough bald head. funnily enough you can't see this but right now i'm sat here in like camouflage cap and camouflage top as well so maybe it's still there um but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so the marines was the original dream and then I ended okay. up, I picked it, I'd been just DJing in my bedroom <coughs> I, and like college parties, you know, like sick form parties with my friend Ben. And then um, I picked up a flyer one day which had the promoter's number on it. And I just thought, all right, let me try. So I called and this guy picked up and I was like, I literally blagged it, bruv. I just found this flyer with the number, yeah. But I was like, oh yeah, hi. Um, my friend gave me your number and he said you were looking for DJs. <laughs> and then the guy, <laughs> the guy goes, oh yeah, we are. Can you come and do a trial? So I was like, yes, I'll come and do it. And then that's how I got my uh that's how I got my first club residency, bruv. I fully blagged okay. it. Full on blaggage. 
That's so, a straight from the straight from the Marine Corps. Yeah, well, no, I ended up, and because of that, because I started <laughs> DJing, I never actually went for Marine selection, so I, I missed out. I was twelve weeks away from joining. No, that's mad, bro. You could have like, I, if you made it into the Marines, you might have been gone. It was this was the exact time that um the quote unquote war on terror started as well. So they were sent straight off. Yeah, no, nah, yeah. You, yeah, like you might have got instead. into the Marine Corps, got onto the ladder, and like that would have been it, man. The DJ career would have never happened, bro. Yeah, but while yeah. I was do- while I was DJing, obviously in the early days, I was still just doing shit little jobs that I didn't want to do. Like I, I worked in a shop. I got fired from that for having beef with the manager, and then I, I worked in a worked in a pub kitchen for ages. So I when mean, did you realize? So when, what age did you think? Like, what age did you think to yourself, your man wants to be a DJ, or like, I'm, I'm looking to get some decks and pick up this music thing? So I got my decks when I was sixteen, I think. Sixteen. Okay. I think okay. so. Yeah, I think I was sixteen. I got some decks. Um, and then obviously what just practicing my what bedroom. Was it? Was it a set of belt drives? No direct drives. I had Stanton str eight sixties. My guy went straight in for the direct drive, yeah. Stanton, you know, with the with the straight tone arms. Yeah, that's right, with the straight tone my arms, guy. Right, the Stanton ones. I bought them off the, the my friend that I used to do college parties with, the sixth form parties. His cousin had a pair that he was selling, and um, funnily no enough, I'm no actually I'm figuring out. Lucky, I've just <laughs> I've still got them. I've still got my first decks, and I'm going to be mounting them on the wall behind me. So soon enough, you'll see them up on the wall. Um, but yeah, what that's jobs that's did that's you that. have? Did you have jobs before DJ? Bro, I had, I had bare jobs, bro. Like, so check this. My my mum never wanted me to be a DJ, in it. Yeah. Obviously, she's never she wasn't around to even see, like my like my career even happen, which is a damn shame, man. Because um, she was always into music. Like I remember, she used to listen. She used to rock like the Lick Party, Trevor Nelson, like early mix CDs and all yeah, that. Yeah. Bro. It was mad. So like all that music was like rubbed off, rubbed off on me from young. Yeah. So like, I got my first ex when I was fourteen, after begging for him from when I was like eleven or twelve. Mm. So for like three years in a row, I asked for these decks, and every Christmas I cried because I never got them. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing so at your pain. Cause yeah, because I know, do you know what I mean, you dick. <laughs> <laughs> so then after three years of still asking for them, I think my mum my must have thought, oh, do you know what? This is actually not just the fad. He's been mithering me for decks every year now for like for like three years. Yeah. So anyway, I got a pair of, um, it was a DJ box package, like all in one. And it was a pair of Cam BDX 280s, I think they were called. They yeah. were belt drives. Yeah. They were like, held together with a fucking elastic band underneath the platter <laughs> like literally the shoddiest the shoddiest turntables ever bro like you couldn't scratch on them or anything like that like you could just about hold the mix without the needle jumping like how i learned to mix on them i have no idea so anyway got the decks 14 to 16 i was just like bedroom dj started a little crew in school in high school, yes, yeah, called the day, de- called the Deja Vu Crew. Deja Vu Crew, get me. And it was Garage. Yeah, because yeah, I started on Garage music. I wasn't, I didn't play R and B and all that back then. I was into like EZ and Sidewinder and that. So we started this crew called the Deja Vu Crew, right? And all the man them used to come round to my house, big up pops. My mum used to go to work early doors, and then my dad used to let the man them come to the yard, and we'd have. Mixtape sessions in the crib yes. before high school. Well, in the morning. In the morning before school. <laughs> bro, listen, bro. We used to get it in, bro. I'm talking at eight o'clock in the morning. The man then would get off the school bus outside school. I lived behind the school. Right. So it was perfect. So all the man them, like all the MC kids, they all lived in like Old Trafford, Moss Side. They were closer to town. They used to come in on this bus called the 701, which brought all the people in from surrounding areas. Yeah. Then they would get the early bus, come to the crib, and we would do mixtapes, record them, all the guys spitting, MCing, and then they would go around school. So everyone in school would be rocking like these tapes, bro. Yes. Like the shit was the shit was lit, bro. Sick. To the point where we we got asked to do um, we were doing the school discos. 
Oh mate, <laughs> we 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 were doing the we were doing the school discos, bro. How did then, I not know this about you? <laughs> yeah, bro, we were doing we were doing the school discos, bro. Playing garage like Mystique, all I want and all that. Remember that tune? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> we, we was playing all that shit, bro. Bro, Amira, my desire, Casey and Jojo, tell me it's real. The remix, all Asylum Steppers remix, all them tunes. So then, after we did two years of the disco, right? I'm not even 16 yet. I'm and like we're planning our leaving party. Yeah, leaving high school, and there was a community center outside the school. So it was like, I wonder if this is how my promo life started. By the way, 16, bro, just a baby. I was like, I wonder if they'll let us throw a party in there. <laughs> yeah, this is in the community center, bro. Anyway. Because we kind of approached them from a, from the school angle and said that we did the school discos, whatever. They said, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> they said, yeah, bro. So we sold tickets. We Stylist sold five-pound tickets. the promoter tickets. was born. Bro, we sold five-pound tickets for kids to come to this party in the community centre. And then when it actually happened, bro, it was a roadblock. Sick. Half the school, half the school turned up, G. <laughs> and it amazing. turned into like, it was like a mini sidewinder. Yes. Crazy. Bro, it was the sickest, man. Oh, do you know what? I wish I could go back to school, man, because shit don't happen like that anymore. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, I leave school and I'm I'm 16. I can't get in the clubs. So I'm not, I mean, I'm, I can't make money off DJing straight away. Yeah. So I was like, I w- so I went to college and then that was when my mum was like, you look, you need to like start, you know what I mean? You're going to have to get a job. You're going to have to start getting norm- like some normal jobs, whatever yeah, yeah, a yeah. normal job is. So yeah, but my, I went. I went for a run of. I went for a run of jobs, right? Like what? <coughs> like what did you do? <coughs> so I worked in. My first proper job was working in a pub as a glass collector. Yeah. Big up the King's Ransom. Big up the King's <laughs> Ransom gang. Big up Richard. You know, man like Richard the boss. He was a G. So I worked in the King's Ransom as a glass collector, which eventually turned into um, doing like a bit of stuff on the bar. Um. But then off the back of that, there was a bar across the road which needed a DJ. So I ended up getting a, a spot in there when I was 17. One right. night a week. One night a week. Yeah. Still wasn't really making enough peas off it. So I was like, I still need to like keep keep working. So I ended up, uh, I worked in the leisure centre for like six months serving chips. Serving chips. <laughs> uh, serving chips, bro, to the people that come out of the pool in my bright orange t-shirt. Yeah, looking like... Just looking like an absolute weapon, brother. It was peak. So yeah, I served, I served chips, I served chips, served chips for six months. Then <coughs> the third, the third and final job. Wait, did I have more jobs? In fact, I had two more jobs after this. Tesco. You Man worked Tesco, in Tesco. Yeah. Man worked in Tesco, bro, for, for about a year. Um, I got fired from there because <laughs> me, yeah, me, me and the me and the manager just didn't get along and like. Yeah, that's I was like me in the thing. shop I worked for. Bro, I have this thing, right? If people are nice to me, I'm nice. Even at that young age, like, if you're nice to me, I was nice to you. But if you came and spoke to me like a dick, even at 16 or 17, you was going to get it back. Yeah. And I was a bit more rough around the edges back then. So, yeah, the manager got told where to put the job up his batty. So, yeah, I lost <laughs> that job. Um, <laughs> then I worked in Vir... Then I had a good job. Man worked in Virgin Megastores, bro. On the vinyl section. Yes. Get me. That was the la- that was the last job that I had, really, because um, the Virgin Mega Stores they went under in the end. They ended up pulling, um, and then Did they? they turned in. Yeah, yeah, and that they turned into Zavi for a bit, and then Zavi went under as well. Um, but yeah, I was the guy at the back on the on the little record bit where you could play the tunes and people were coming looking for songs and whatnot. And that like that was yeah. After that, that was my last job. It took me <coughs> to when I was like eighteen, and then boom. I was in the clubs ever since. Um, that one night, that one night a week residency on the Friday turned into three nights. They give me Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. 150 pound, 150 pound a night, bro. At eighteen, three nights a week. Yeah. I was gassed. <laughs> Some people aren't even Imagine, getting that now, bro. Man <laughs> is still out here on one fifty at thirty. <laughs> yeah, not saying no names. <laughs> um, so yeah. That's kind of where it. That's that was kind of my my journey from school through jobs into being in the clubs, and then twelve years later, man's here still. There you go. So, yeah, I've had I've had some poor jobs, man. But like sometimes you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do to get shit done, G. Yeah, definitely. 
Like, it's that simple. Like, I was working and my money was going, I was funding my DJ habit. Yeah, that's exactly the same with me, man. The money that I was making from, like, the pub kitchen and whatnot and the money that I was making through the office job basically paid for me to get the equipment that I needed as I was going. But more importantly, back in them times, it paid for me to buy the vinyl so that I had the music that I needed to get into the clubs. Because there wasn't, there wasn't, there wasn't no record pools there wasn't any itunes that you could download on like it was vinyl you have to buy vinyl if you don't have the vinyl you can't play <laughs> mad yeah that's actually mad like i wonder oh we say this all the time but imagine if it was like that now i would like the dj thing wouldn't have evolved to the mess that it's in now <laughs> no. No, 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 definitely the mess not. the mess that we're in now bro like imagine how many djs wouldn't have even bothered yeah to even try it if they knew they had to buy turntables, buy each individual record. Like, <coughs> Not only that, <coughs> it'd, it'd just be you, sick. It'd be if sick. If you think it'd about when, when it was vinyl times as well, because you're spending your own money mm. on certain vinyls, you're not going to buy vinyls you don't like. So that's why every single DJ has their, or at least then, every single DJ had their own sound. And obviously yeah, there was yeah, yeah, yeah. there was the top records that everyone liked and everyone played and everyone had to own. But it was everything around that that made you mm-hmm. and your set unique. That was how, brother, I'll be real. That's how I managed to establish myself in Brighton when I did. Because... Because man was getting I, the records well, early. Well, because I can't... No, no, not, not, just, not just getting the records early because really and truthfully, in the early days, I wasn't. Because I was the outsider. So I was coming into the record store, fresh-faced 18-year-old, this guy I'd never seen before. He's not going to give me the special ones yet because I haven't proved my place. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but what I did come with... That's exactly what it was like. But what, well, I did, I, what I did come in with was a different perspective on the music. I was Because I was an outsider, I was from out of town. I didn't hang out with any of the DJs from the town. So I had a completely different way of looking at music and mixing to everybody else. So okay. if you saw me play, even though in the early days I was getting the early sets, if you saw me play, it sounded different to everyone else because I had a different taste. And that was then like the promoters are, okay, well, we want to get this guy because he's not like everyone else. He sounds different. And that's, do you know what I mean? That's where I feel like it's evolved because these days everyone's playing just the same stuff. No one's really taking yeah. risks or yeah. putting their own flavor in, which we've spoken about. I mean, we've chatted about it a yeah. few times on the podcast. That's why this weekend was dope, bro, right? Because <clears throat> I'm playing with Q <clears throat> and Joe Sensation, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. they're both quite creative and like a bit out there with the selection. Very, right? very eclectic so, like, DJs, both of them. Ed- exactly, man. So like me and Q ended up going back to back and it was just like the most out there, creative, like next edits. Like we're doing tricks off each other because me and Q, like we know each other's sets. We've played back to back. There's only like a handful of DJs I can go back to back with. Q's like one of them. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. he's he's right deck, I'm left deck, one deck each. Sick. But we've got an we've got an S9 and then we're both like doing tricks off the back of each other. Yeah. yeah and it yeah. was just like because he's playing different shit that I've not heard. Like I'm then my my route, my my like trail of thought with the music is completely different. Yeah, it sends you off somewhere else, isn't it? Yeah, man. Like so like every song he would play, like I'm like getting redirected in the next route like when you play yeah. on your own sometimes you can get into a little bit of a routine with how you how you put your stuff out yeah like 100% doing that doing that back to back and especially with someone who is mad creative anyway and plays both the edits man was bro I told him I said I'm writing these down no shame <laughs> 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 my mum was playing some next edits but yeah I think that that, that, was, that was fire bro like that, that whole back to back stuff it definitely opens up like creative levels because sometimes you can just get stuck in your own your own ways, man. And yeah. I've not done a back-to-back set for Definitely. time. No, I, brother, I haven't done a back-to-back set. Me, I swear, me and you went back-to-back at Tipsy in Edinburgh, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, and that was actually lit. That was the last time I did one. That was lit. That, that was fire. The yeah, Afro that Beach was, ran that was, off that, that night. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good night. That was a good double, night. Double, double, when Double gets into his own, yeah, you can't talk to him. No, it's you can't even look at him like he's just literally I was trying to catch him on the camera bare times and it's like I'm not even there I promise that no one's there it's <laughs> fucking weird man I'm just in the bubble but I just go like nah it's proper that that's proper they're the best ones they're the mm. best ones when you have to watch the crowd too much it kind of kills your vibe man like when you can just roll with it and the energy is great yeah 
Best ones. Good times. Best ones. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna go and get there you go. go and get a ten minute look sleep, you, mate. I think I'm gonna look get a ten minute Look after yourself. Sleep. Double can go for a ten minute power nap. <laughs> <laughs> get me. Um, I'm gonna try and come down to London as well in the next couple of weeks, so we can sit down with a couple more guests, man. So if anyone yes. has any like DJs or anyone we think we should chop it up with down in the capital, yeah, um, let us know, man. Let us know. We're open to suggestions. If you want to join us Get on me. the podcast, hit us up in the comments below. But you must be you must be near London on a Monday or two. It's gonna be on a Monday afternoon, isn't it? Yeah, when we do it. Yeah. So if you're around London on Mondays in the next like couple of weeks. And you feel like you can add some spice to the cast? Yeah. Then um, hit us up, innit? I've had a few people reach out, actually, bro. I've had a few people hit me up that want to come, man. Yeah, so, man. Yeah, we'll chase that Same. up. We'll chase that up. We'll make it work. Let's do it. Let's bring the guests in. Hashtag talk over podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Get on forget- Spotify, YouTube itunes apple music all of that all of that apple good music stuff. yes subscribe okay, like yeah. comment tell a friend to tell a friend to tell the mum yeah all right we out